everyone, it's 45 past the hour, and the session should be live now, so let's get started. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today uh, around the globe, uh, and really appreciate it to join us at ML Ops World 2021. Before I introduce our next speaker, I'd like to just go over two reminders. The first is to update your profile. This makes it easier to connect with other attendees and help you get the most out of this virtual experience. The second is to check out some of our partners at the booths for a chance to win some amazing prizes, including a $100 Amazon gift card. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Ehab Ilyas. Ehab is a professor at the Cheriton School of Computer Science and the Ensert Thompson Router Research Chair on Data Quality at the University of Waterloo. His main research focuses on the area of big data and database systems with special interest in data quality and integration, managing uncertain data, machine learning for data curation and information extraction. Ehab is a co-founder of Tamer, a, a startup focusing on large-scale data integration, and he is also the co-founder of Inductive, a Waterloo-based startup on using AI for structured data cleaning, which was acquired by Apple. He is an a ACM fellow and the recipient of multiple awards, including the Ontario Early Research Award, the NSERC Discovery Accelerator Award, and the Google Faculty Award, as well as a Cheriton Faculty Fellowship. Ehab will be giving us a talk on structured learning for private data generation with the HoloClean framework and the Camino system. Please give a warm welcome in chat to Ehab Ilyas. Awesome. Thank you very much for having um, Today, uh, I'm gonna share with you a new project that we are working on in the University of Waterloo. Uh, Camino is um, a way to share uh, data privately while still maintaining uh, the utility and the usefulness of the data even after privatization. Um, you will see a logo of HoloClean now, a previous project uh, that, I, that I had the pleasure of, of being part of that uh, focused on structured uh, learning for data cleaning. Um, and today I'm going to show you uh, how Camino builds on HoloClean uh, to solve a really interesting problem in, in data sharing in, uh, in a very data intensive environment that we are right now. So. Um, Basically, we, we are all after the same thing, going from raw data after the ingestion of a lot of um, um, uh, data from multiple sources. Uh, uh, oftentimes, they are in a semi-structured or structured uh, format. However, um, uh, they, they might come in a very um, set of heterogeneous schemas or, and um, different controlled vocabularies. And, um, uh, and it take a lot of time to get to get it into kind of one place. And the idea is to take uh, this raw data and do something to it such that we start to get insights and uh, some uh, useful uh, analytics on top of this data to power new experiences or to power uh, analytics or to open a new lines of business uh, or to sell um, these insights to somebody else. And the major problem that we dealt with in the in the last few years, and we 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 got some uh, really cool results there, is how to deal with incomplete and dirty data, and uh, how to combat the lots of time that data scientists um, uh, use to prepare this data for analytics. And today, I'm going to add one more challenge uh, to this data that it's often time uh, it's sensitive and uh, sharing it uh, uh, is problematic. And if we recognize that the coupling in space and time between when this data is acquired and where is it acquired, and uh, the analytics pipeline that needs to uh, surface in sight, uh, data sharing or data movement is kind of uh, a must. And now we need to worry if, if data scientists and analysts, analysts uh, have the right to look at this data, and and now is the scrutiny of user privacy and 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 user data that makes uh, these things even harder. So as I said previously, the notorious data quality problem has been tackled in the past by you know, tons of billions of dollars uh, creating companies to handle data prep transformation ETL and trying to help data scientists to um, reduce the manual labeling and fixing. Uh, and I think we have strides in, in, 
in that challenge. And um, we provided uh, multiple talks and Holoclean uh, uh, was something that we start working on in 2017 that moved to be a commercial product in 2019 called the Inductive that soon was acquired um, uh, by Apple. And uh, uh, although the, the open source uh, repo is still out there and, and, and still being used in the academic, uh, at least academic communities, I'm still publishing it. And the whole idea there is to how uh, model the problem of data cleaning and automate it via modeling the problem as an inference problem where we develop models to understand how data was generated, how errors were introduced, and use that understanding to infer the correct uh, data or impute what's missing, uh, or sometimes decide if what I'm seeing is correct or incorrect. So the underlying idea, if I represent what I'm seeing uh, and and uh, with um, um, I'm gonna get into how clean um, a quick intro later. But the idea is to build to build a probabilistic model that kind of model that context uh, that uh, that I observe and use that context to predict, for example, if the salary of that person is correct or the zip code of that person is correct, and what is the most the most probable uh, city for for this concert to take place and what have you. So we've done really well there and we showed that uh, this problem is 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 heavily automated and, and we put it in production in 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 um, in multiple enterprises with great results so I'm really proud of that the problem is what do we do with privacy if we add this um as a direction as, as another facet to the problem and if the data is sitting behind the firewall it's kind of trivial to think about data cleaning and and uh, running prediction models behind that firewall uh, on prem and that's that's understood so that that is okay but the problem is that insights probably require moving this data or sharing this data from multiple places um, to where analytics are so what do we do there the first thing that might come to your mind and especially if you're if you're um, a differential private uh, differential privacy fan is well let's synthesize data that is kind of um, uh, have some strong guarantees of privacy. And indeed, there is uh, a lot of interesting work on how to use concepts like differential privacy to synthesize a sample. And if this sample now will have strong statistical guarantees um, 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 and, and provable privacy, as people say, even if it's statistical or probabilistic, but then I can give it to analytics and get insights. And uh, just to refresh your memory about what differential privacy is in a layman, uh, uh, words, it's kind of the ability, the, the lack of ability to tell the difference between two neighboring data sets uh, was, that differs in one record uh, with respect to certain output. So basically, I cannot really tell with very high probability if a specific person or specific record uh, is, is a member of this data set. And, and, uh, and with, with what we call a privacy budget, uh, that controls that probability or that guarantee. So that's pretty cool. And in fact, there's a lot of solutions that do this. The problem is how useful really this data set that you think aside that it's private to draw analytics. And the, the reality, it's not, not that useful uh, beyond the specific use case, like unless you're interested in uh, simple analytics or a specific task, um, then uh, just getting insights or, or, or training the, treating this data set as a training data for, uh, for, for, um, uh, for a classification task or a prediction task or even uh, a simpler task around um, the, 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 the analysis of the multiple facets of this data set becomes really weird. And the reason is under the cover, uh, the whole key is we destroy the dependency in this data um, uh, intentionally, so we cannot really recover information from this data. So if we believe that in order to get insights from the data, you need to maintain the dependency and structure between different things in this data, that's really one of the deep characteristic of the data set and intentionally destroying it uh, makes it really hard to utilize it downstream beyond the specific task that you have in mind when you synthesize this data to begin with. Uh, and we actually showed in, in, in El Camino that even if you try to say, oh, I'm gonna synthesize the data and then I'm gonna use Holoclean to kind of uh, recover uh, or any probabilistic technique to recover the structure. And we showed uh, empirically that this is even, in, 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 it's impossible. And um, because, you know, it's a chicken and egg and by destroying that structure, you really cannot learn anything uh, that allow you to do something useful with this data set. 
So in order to solve this problem and, um, and keep the, the structure and the dependency, and I'm gonna uh, give you an example of what that means later, uh, we came up with Camino and uh, uh, Chung, uh, my PhD student in Waterloo was the main driver behind us. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Chung is in the audience now. And uh, basically the idea was simple. Can I repurpose something like Holoclean, which is a model that was purpose to clean and predict the data, but under the hood, it learns the structure, it learns the dependency in this data to be able to clean it. If I can uh, learn this in a private way, then I probably can use this privacy uh, 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 or this model that is learned in a private way, but aware of the structure as a first class citizen to synthesize a private data set that mimics the original data set in structure and dependency, but at the instance level, it still enjoys the differential privacy um, uh, anonymization guarantees. And uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but now the analytics on the other uh, on the other side, it's a bit blurry. It's not as crisp as the analytics that you're gonna get on the original data set, but it's still useful. There is a lot of things that you can get from there that it's probably way more useful than um, um, a butcher the data set that, that doesn't enjoy any of the structure. So the key message is if we privately learn a data model, even if it was previously uh, uh, was the purpose of cleaning it, just learning the data model in a private way, we probably can generate private uh, uh, structure preserving samples that are useful and, um, and still protect um, the sensitivity around this data. So here is the opportunity. Uh, machine learning cleaning models like Holoclean learns the underlying probabilistic model efficiently. This opportunity number two, that the structure is learned as part of the model. In fact, the picture on the right hand uh, side, uh, trying to, to uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, a schematic diagram of, uh, of the attention, the schema level attention mechanism that Holoclean used in um, addition to these sparse features that are in red that correspond to, for example, violations of certain constraints like function dependency between uh, zip and uh, zip, uh, zip code and city and the relationship between salary and tax and all of these things. And then we put all of those as a representation of, uh, of the context when we predict a target uh, column or a target cell. So cool, so we can learn a probabilistic model in an efficient way. The structure is learned as part of this model to a big extent. And uh, the model can predict data based on observed context. So if we can solve the following two questions, uh, then Camino has a chance of achieving the task that I was just told you. So the first question is, can I learn this model privately without compromising efficiency? Bear in mind that I cannot learn this model in a non-private way and then try to kind of anonymize the output because then you know the, the differential privacy expert will tell you that unless you the, the process end-to-end -end is a differential private, uh, then, then you have no guarantees. So when you really need to learn that model uh, with privacy uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a first principle. So if we succeeded in answering this question correctly, then question number two is, uh, can I repurpose this uh, prediction model to construct a sample as, a, as opposed to uh, repair a sample? Bear in mind uh, uh, something like Holoclean, look at a data set or a table, and then look at what I know or what I observe, and I use that to predict uh, a wrong data set or a missing data set. But it was never used to start from an empty table and start to populate it by a sample that came from that model. So that's the attempt, and Camino is the first attempt to do that. Uh, and, and I'm gonna share with you what we're doing. So in, in, this is a paper that appeared uh, recently in VLDB 21, but it's also an archive. And at the end of the talk, there is a link uh, uh, for it, but you can, you know, search Camino and, and uh, the authors and you will get it. Uh, and it has details of how the provided data instance of the sample D prime is uh, a data set that is uh, generated by Camino uh, protocol Camino mechanism from an input D star, an observed data set that is private and a bunch of integrity constraint, I refer to it here by phi. And those are things like function dependencies, denial constraints, I'm gonna give you an example later. And D prime is consistent with respect to that structure. And that's our kind of proxy or approximation of it has the same structure dependency, it enjoys the same dependency, and it's also differentially private. 
So to refresh your mind about uh, what I'm talking about, the probabilistic model of uncertainty model, I'm going to flash this uh, slide here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But the idea is very simple. In, in ICDT 2019, we, we, uh, uh, we, we started to talk about this probabilistic model for uh, probabilistic data uncertainty model, where if we model the pollution that happens to the data in, in a noisy channel model, uh, we assume data was generated um, uh, by intention uh, model as clean. Then it went through a, 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 a pollution or a realization model that added noise and inconsistencies in this data. And then you observe uh, the data at hand, the real data set as GSTAR. And in this case, if you can build uh, a, a model that, um, uh, that represent this intention data generation mechanism and the pollution model that added noise to the data, you can recover the original data set by the data set that maximize uh, the probability of the observed data set. So if you don't know what that, you know, I don't want you to get lost in the details, but the idea here is to learn models uh, parameterize models and 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 learn these parameters. And if I learn that model, I probably can predict what was the original data set is. Uh, and that will be our way of imputing a uh, missing value or uh, correcting a value that is wrong. Uh, so here is an example of what a model that generated the data. We assume there is a prior model, which is kind of the uh, probability of the tuples. Uh, and But what's more important is, we assume that there is a set of constraints or a set of uh, integrity structural constraints, phi, and then the probability of an observed model is uh, taking this into account. So for example, this is an exponential, uh, uh, um, a formula from the exponential family in which di is the probability of uh, a world or probability of a data set is uh, influenced as you see by um, the weight of phi, w of phi, and the number of violations of phi. What does that really mean is as in a data set that doesn't have a lot of violation of the integrity constraints, it has way more probability appearing than a data set that have a lot of violations of these constraints. And that's how we influence um, the generation uh, that I'm gonna show you later. So what is it that integrity constraints that I keep talking about? Uh, think about it as formula that tell you what's possible and what's not possible. So for example, although it's, um, you know, I can put it in, in, in first order logic uh, formula like this one, but it's really saying things like, if you agree on city, you should agree on state. So you cannot have two tuples that have the same city and they don't have the same state. You can have also a complex uh, formula like, that tells you like for two people and living, two people in the same role in a company, I'd like to compensate people in New York City slightly higher um, uh, because the, you know, you know, uh, life expenses and taxes are higher. Uh, you know, an HR rule that every company uses to compensate their um, uh, their uh, employees fairly. But we rely on this formula to represent the structure in the data. As I said, Holoclean learns this structure uh, uh, pretty, uh, uh, you know, in a in a soft constrained way. But I would will learn things like how important is uh, city to um, to predict the county, for example. Uh, so um, again, in, in an analysis paper in 2020, we showed this schema level attention that basically tried to tell you uh, how important uh, every uh, column in predicting uh, other columns. And then if we, if we do contextual representation of the observed data, I can use that uh, schema level attention and the embedding that represents uh, the observed um, cells to start predicting uh, a not known cell or a target cell. So for example, given the zip code and the age and the, and the city, I can probably predict um, the most probable county uh, of that particular record. So again, I, I don't wanna spend uh, details here. I'm just trying to give you a hint that there are interesting models that use uh, contextual representation and embedding methods to be able to model the uh, 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 contextual represent uh, uh, the observed uh, data set, but I also augment that by the violations of denial constraints and violations of uh, all of these structure constraints to be able to get a very accurate prediction of the output. So that's really hollow clean. Okay, so if I can learn these two, how do I really uh, um, learn this model privately? 
And the good news is, uh, you know, we didn't have to do much there. I'm encouraging you to read the uh, CCS paper in 2016, because it turns out, because this is a neural model, we probably can privately train uh, with relatively good accuracy that model using advanced privacy composition. So I'm not going to get into the details of how to do this, but we uh, we um, built on a lot of results in the differential privacy community lately to be able to learn models end to end uh, by kind of introducing a little bit noise during the, the learning process uh, with respect to this privacy budget that I told you about. And hence, you can learn uh, uh, that model uh, privately. So if I assume that we succeeded in this, can we really repurpose Holoclean to generate this synthesis machine as opposed to a prediction machine? And the tricks that we did there is uh, we decompose this model to be able to incrementally uh, predict uh, cells using only the constructed cells so far. Uh, again, not, not something um, uh, you know, that you'll find strange or, or, um, uh, or out of the uh, ordinary. It's just a, a very intuitive way of building a data set uh, one by one. So here is the overall architecture. I start by a private data star, a data set D star, a schema, uh, some domain information, a set of denial constraints representing the structure, and a differential privacy budget um, uh, D, uh, B that kind of allow me to learn this model uh, in, a, in a private way. And you can see now, um, uh, you know, the second stage is um, the middle box and the box at the uh, under it, it's learning the attention mechanism in a private way, learning the DC weights in a private way, and that basically becomes the model. And then I'm going to impose an order on the schema and incrementally, column by column, start to um, uh, build one cell at a time, given what we have observed so far. And the output is a privately constructed uh, data using the model um, that we learned from the original data set. So uh, I'm going to zoom through this because I really would like to hear your questions. But you know, if you remember, this is the, uh, the probability um, distribution that I showed you earlier, where the probability of a data set is the probability of the tuple. And then there is an um, exponential term that model how these tuples interact with each other by counting the violations uh, uh, the current observation have with respect to a specific uh, denial constraint or specific uh, structure. And what we're going to do is in a series of transformation, rewrite uh, this to be um, um, a cell at a time, uh, cell at a time model. And the idea is uh, um, we need a couple of tricks to count the violations projected of what I constructed so far and also uh, come up with a way to efficiently compute the probabilities, even if I haven't observed the whole data set yet. But through these transformations, um, you can now model the probability of the next cell, given the cells I have seen so far. And um, you know, I'm not surprised if the first question comes to your mind, well, the order matters in this thing, and it, it absolutely um, it does. And if you're not careful, you might not get uh, really good results. So uh, we showed that um, you can apply this process incrementally by saying for each attribute, for each row, there is a conditional probability of what I've seen so far, and then application of the DC weights and computing of the number of violations. And you can see these complicated terms in the number of violations. They are not counting it in the whole data set. Counted, it's just counted on the uh, 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 partial sample constructed so far. And that's it. So if you if you see the 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 white part is the construct the part that we construct, the gray part is to be constructed, and you raster scan through in this table uh, by saying, okay, bachelors given uh, all the other tuples t1, t2, t3 uh, have 13, 13, 9, and 10, uh, and and given that t1 education is bachelor, what is the most probable education for tuple two uh, given everything I've seen so far? And um, and uh, the table on the right uh, is kind of the uh, growing statistics that we collect to be able to populate uh, this formula that I showed you earlier, and then um, have a probability distribution on the domain. And I can say, well, the most probable one here is also bachelor, and so on. 
there are optimizations that are in the paper and in the um, uh, and that in the code that trying to see uh, how order affects the uh, the the probability and there we do uh, um, uh, really heuristics on trying to have a topological sort of the columns uh, starting by uh, the columns that um, uh, cannot be determined by anybody else and we'd like to um, have uh, the, mo the the columns that can be discriminated or can be determined by other columns to come later. Uh, it is a heuristic and we're working on other optimization there, uh, but the current heuristics uh, work pretty well. So I wanna give credit uh, to the rest of the team. It's really the main driver behind this is uh, my bright student Chang and, uh, and he's in the market soon. So reach out to Chang, he's, uh, uh, he's brilliant and he has done all the uh, the heavy lifting in Camino. In fact, he came up with Camino because he's a big fan of Star Wars and uh, on planet Camino, you clone things. Uh, and, and that's how he came up with the name. This also could not be done without a strong collaboration with uh, uh, Xi, uh, assistant professor in Waterloo and a massive differential privacy expert and her uh, student, uh, Shubankar, uh, also um, a PhD student in the data systems group interested in privacy. So this is the team and um, and really proud and honored that I have uh, the chance to work with all of them. So in conclusion, Camino is really a, a framework that allows to incorporate the structure of the data and learn a model in a differential private way uh, to start um, a synthesis process to generate a data set and inspired by the original data set but enjoys all the dependency and the structure to make it useful for, an, for analysts and other teams to look at it. So we think it's extremely powerful way of data sharing. Uh, oftentimes we are in organizations and I'd love to get a sample of your data set, um, but if you can give it to me in a differentially private way, but still enjoys all the dependency and the underlying structure, I probably can build models, uh, get insights, uh, inform my process, without compromising this, um, um, the sensitivity agreement and contracts by the legal department. Um, resources here are the full version of the paper, uh, an evolving code that uh, uh, Chang is, is, is keep pushing uh, um, uh, into it in, in, uh, and it's available uh, uh, as an open source. And of course, you can always go to the Holoclean, holoclean.io for the underlying model for learning um, uh, for learning the data model itself that we use for prediction. Uh, and I'm gonna stop here and, and, and I take, uh, take questions. I hope this is useful. Uh, and if you didn't get the details, uh, uh, please go and check out the paper and uh, send questions to me or Chang. That's it, thank you for listening today. Yeah, thank you, Ihab, for the insightful talk. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely have uh, about seven minutes till the next live session for questions. Uh, so if you have any questions, post it on the chat on the on the right. Uh, so to start off, uh, we have a question, which is how would you contrast HoloClean with uh, Snorkel? Oh, interesting. Uh, um, HoloClean is really, um, as uh, you know, HoloClean has a very uh, specific use case. HoloClean's uh, Holoclean as a model, try to learn a model that uh, um, basically represent how this data was generated. And then this model is used to uh, uh, predict uh, things like, for example, um, uh, what is the most probable value for a specific cell given the other context. Mm -hmm. um, and like any other platform uh, and a framework, we added a lot of capabilities in, in Holoclean. So it has a model that built a, a featureizer kind of marketplace in which people add features with respect to how to featureize specific uh, denial constraints or function dependency, in addition to lots of optimization parameters of uh, optimization uh, knobs in, in how to learn that model. But also it has things like Holo Detect, which a model to detect um, errors without necessarily the capabilities of saying what is the most probable value that can replace them. Uh, we're working also on a fusion uh, module that allow you to uh, work on deduplication. So after data is deduplicated and clustered, how to fuse them into golden record as application of that framework. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's hard for me to, to contrast this to Snorkel, which is uh, basically also another whole framework 
um, uh, but geared toward data labeling uh, and, and weak supervision tooling and auto ML. So I, I, I feel that both of them are in um, kind of automatic, automatically um, uh, uh, building machine learning pipelines for certain tasks. They definitely mm -hmm. share that. Uh, but Holoclean is really a structured data prediction and cleaning tool, and that's the main focus. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so I, I guess just to kind of understand um, uh, about Camino, the output of the um, of the uh, system is basically it has um, the same features, but then it's just not the same data that like um, that was privately given to you, right? That is correct, Peter. It has uh, well, features here are used broadly to mm -hmm. represent, for example, um, uh, if there is a dependency, for example, zip code and city, mm -hmm. uh, if you agree on the zip code, you need to agree on the city. You don't want this dependency to be lost mm -hmm. uh, in, in the private data, even if there are different zips and different cities, but you would like to keep this because otherwise the data is irrational. Mm -hmm. If all the, if you have salaries and taxes, and you imagine that the taxes follow like a tax bracket thing on the salary. Mm -hmm. You don't want a synthesized data set in which taxes are more than salaries, because like in this case, it, it's just numbers, but they are kind of dumb numbers that you cannot really uh, get any insights from. So that's exactly it. The data looks different. You cannot tell if something that you see was part of the original data set or not was very mm -hmm. high probability, but the data that you see still makes sense. So it's a clone. Uh, that that still look like human, but it's not the same person that you saw uh, before. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of have a, in a sense, like in the marketing sense, like a persona, in a sense of a person, but not the specific person itself. Exactly. So I have a bunch of users who uh, was engaging in a certain activities, and I collected this user data uh, from from some adapters, and now I'd like to share it with like my marketing team to see, uh, you know. Uh, some general statistics on that population. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of anonymization or, or encryption, you might say here is different set of users uh, that are you know generated in a differential private way, but the dynamics between these columns and cells are kind of following the same structure that in the original data set. Mm -hmm. That sounds that sounds amazing, especially from like uh, I'm guessing like uh, have you guys looked into like a healthcare context where you know uh, to do any healthcare research you requires all for a good reason, a lot of, um, I guess, board um, right. uh, I, I, agreements or uh, approval. Right, right, right. 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 That, that's, that's exactly right. We're, we're really looking forward for use cases of this. So if you have a good use case, um, even if the current source code does not handle it, uh, reaching out to, to Chang or me and saying, would like to, would love to put this in, in the hands of as many people as, as we can and uh, we're willing to spend resources and cycles on understanding their use case and and helping them out uh, with this. It's uh, it's definitely more insight for us of what's missing and what mm -hmm. can we improve. I see. Okay. Well, um, I, I guess we have another question, which is um, uh, so he, Rajiv is looking uh, talking about asking about the term marketplace for hollow clean for different domain constraint. How can I access or check it out? Uh, so inside the hollow clean code, you will find one of the directories or the modules called featureizers. Mm -hmm. And these featureizers are basically a way to go from uh, a logical concept, like a feature, like a function dependency or a business rule into the basically the tensor that's going to be uh, included in the hollow clean feature space. And we, we left this in a modular way because uh, right now we have, for example, a uh, featureizer for denial constraints or uh, just a you know a, a character uh, level embedding for uh, for text attributes. But I'm I'm sure that people have other features that you would like to take into account, um, a, or a specific kind of new type of embedding to represent uh, one of the short uh, or text or categorical data. Then this is the place in which you write this. Uh, you add that feature as one of uh, featureizer as one of the featureizer. Then you register it. In the main, um, in, in in the main uh, prediction and learning model, uh, and then it will be invoked. So we're trying to make it as extensible as as uh, as possible. Bear in mind that this is a an academic project, so it might not be kind of bulletproof or or, or self-explanatory. But uh, but that's the idea. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
I, I think that that should be it for questions. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Ihab, for taking your time to join us today. And I, I think this is an amazing project. And you know, I, I could just see a lot of applications, especially as you mentioned earlier, with um, the more emphasis on privacy nowadays. Uh, that this this is a um, push to uh, to get this implemented out there. Awesome, appreciate right. it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.